Welcome back to Ireland AM. Now, the GAA have introduced new rules ahead of the club championship restart. And as Manchester City await their fate in future European competition, they face a tough path to this year's final. Off the balls, Nathan Murphy is here with us this morning. Good morning, Nathan. Morning, lads. Good morning to you, Nathan. Let's see what's making the back pages this morning. It's name and shame. That's the headline on the Irish Daily Sport. Jose Mourinho calls referees out on gaffes. The Irish Daily Mail leads with it's a FAI or deal, a fair deal with union backing bailout for plan for association and open season on the Herald Sport. Former Galway football manager John O'Mahony believes Desi Farrell's dubs face a difficult defence of Sam Maguire. We'll get into those stories and more in just a moment, but we are <clears throat> reacting to the breaking news. About 15 minutes ago, uh, we learned that the former Republic of Ireland manager, Jack Charlton, sadly has passed away at the age of 85. His family have released a statement to say, as well as friend, a friend to many, he was a much adored husband, father, grandfather, and Great grandfather, we cannot express how profound or how proud we are of the extraordinary life he led and the pleasure he brought to so many people in different countries from all walks of life. He was a thoroughly honest, kind, funny, and genuine man who always had time for people. And the FAI have also released a statement in the last few moments to say the FAI is deeply saddened to learn of the death of Jack Charlton, the manager who changed. Irish football forever. And from our point of view, that really sums them up. It's, it's, a, it's very sad news, Nathan. Ah, it's dreadful news. I think people will be waking up across the country just with an overwhelming sense of sadness because Jack Charlton was a colossus in Irish sport. He was the most important figure there's ever been in Irish football, arguably the most important figure there's ever been in Irish sport. He changed, mm. this, he changed this country with what he did. And for, for my generation, I'm sure for, your, for all of us, like, he gave us some of the best days of our lives, from Houghton in Stuttgart to Packy in Genoa to Ray Houghton in, in Giant Stadium. Yeah. These are the days that we all grew up remembering and enjoying and loving and gave us, I think, that thirst for football. Mm -hmm. And he did all that. And the power of his personality as well. He is, I think, for a generation, the most important figure in, in Irish sport. He changed everything we think about Irish football in particular. And it's just it's dreadfully sad for, for his family, uh, obviously, first and foremost. But I just think everybody, there's going to be a lot of nostalgia and a lot of, a lot of great things said about Jack Charlton because and he, he, had he some, left he, some legacy. He had some connection with Ireland, didn't he? He mm. absolutely loved the job. He loved being here. He loved spending time in Ireland. You know, there's so many stories about him. Well, he's I was fishing around the country. Oh, yeah. I, yeah. I remember as a kid in, in Mayo, he used to go up to Ballina on a Sunday and he'd be fishing in the Moy. Right. And there would be thousands yeah. of people on the bridge <laughs> just standing there watching, watching Jack fish. fishing, who would be literally wouldn't even look up, just yeah, yeah. not bothered yeah, at all. Yeah, he had, he had godlike status really in this country and, and thoroughly deserved because what he did for Irish football, as, as you've said, um, was remarkable, something we've never achieved before. And really when you look back on it, whether people like the type of football we played or not, it was very successful. Yeah, listen, a quarter of a century on, everyone looks back at it slightly differently and technically this and that. At the time, the vast majority of people just wanted the party. They just wanted something mm. different. And he brought so much joy to so many people's lives and generally did it with a big smile on his face as well and gave us a, a sense of confidence mm. in terms of what could be achieved on a world scale that wasn't there before. And did that as a manager in Ireland and what he did as a player as well in England because all the tributes here in this country are obviously going to be about yeah. what he achieved as a manager. Mm. In as England, you see already yeah. at the BBC, he's a World Cup winner, was part, was central figure. Lest we forget, and a terrific career at Leeds as um, well. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see, uh, you know, how, because I think you've hit the nail on the head, Nathan, in terms of how the pundits will react, because back in the day, I mean, the football was slated. Mm. It was by pretty much one and all, mm. but none of that will be remembered. No. Because I, of what he did to the, for the game in Ireland, you know, and to, to raise our hopes mm. for... Years. Mm. He brought us to places we'll never be, be again. Yeah, yeah. certainly so an to, English to man has never. Final, yeah, that's his pride to an <laughs> exactly. Irish station exactly. before. He was, he was the most honorary of honorary yeah, Irishmen, yeah. as you say, to to bring us to a World Cup quarter final. And those days will literally to people's dying days will be some of the yeah, best yeah. days of their lives. Yeah. And that is his legacy. And every tribute he gets today will be fully deserved. And so. even that night when we lost, that do you remember them coming back out mm. and he brought the players back out. And they almost, they celebrated the whole journey of that tournament. This was after the... the after Scalacci, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah and should the home still can't say and the everything like, like we had won. Oh, they were legends. Good days and thank you, Jack, and mm. rest in peace.